نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا حبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اما بعد My brothers and sisters, today I'd like to talk about death. The question I have for you is, are you scared of death? And if you are scared of death, why are you scared of it? What makes you so scared of dying? Of course, I see a phenomenal number of people, unfortunately, and very sadly passing away around us because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It could be me next minute, it could be you, it could be any one of us. With such a death threat all around us, this menacing virus that is taking many of our loved ones, young and old, man and woman, those who have had underlying conditions or those who don't, it naturally makes you and I think, worry and be afraid. We become fearful of what could be waiting for us on the other side. I know many of us are afraid of death, but we have to reconcile our fear of death with some realities, my brothers and sisters. I've been thinking about this for the last few weeks, few months, maybe a few years perhaps. And I've been thinking, how do I reconcile the fact that I'll die and my fear of my death? The reasons why I believe people are afraid of death. I've listed seven reasons why I believe people are afraid of death. Number one, ignorance about life after death. There are people who are genuinely unaware of the fact that once they die, a new life would begin. They're genuinely unaware of the fact that there will be accountability. They're genuinely unaware of the fact that there is God. They're genuinely unaware of the fact that there is heaven and there is hell. There is ultimate justice. They are absolutely unaware of it because such message has never reached them. And believe you me, there are people like that. So for them, dying means the end. When you are ignorant about the life to come, you believe your end is just around the corner. And therefore you're scared of ending. Number two, there are people who are knowledgeable about death and the life after death, but they did not care or prepare. In other words, the fact that there are people dying around them has woken them up true. But they might be knowledgeable about what might happen to them, but they couldn't be bothered. They thought, you know what, I'll prepare tomorrow. They thought, I'll do my good work later in life, when I'm older, when I'm unable to run around and enjoy my youthfulness right now, I'll do it later. So those people are the second category of people. They have knowledge of death, but they did not care or prepare. They delayed it. They said, oh, we'll do it later. We'll prepare later, or actually it can't be bothered. The third category of people are those people who gamble with life and death. They are worried about going to the other side. They're scared of death because they are worried about going to the other side and waking up only to find out that there is actually a life after death. What a shock. They were gambling. They've been gambling all their life. They've been hoping that actually there will not be another life to come. There will be no accountability. There will be no heaven, no hell. There is no God, nothing. We don't have to worry about it. It's called being agnostic about it. I'm not really bothered by what's awaiting. In fact, I don't even believe that there is something awaiting. There is no proof. So I'll take a gamble. I'll do everything that I can and I'll put all my eggs in the earthly basket and not at all bother about the hereafter. They're terrified of dying because what if there is a hereafter? What if there is a life after death? The fourth category of people is that these are the people who are afraid of accountability and punishment. They're worried about hell. They know that while they were alive on this earth, 
they have not done enough or they only carried on doing wicked amount of wicked they were wicked people they did evil they were involved in all sorts of illicit activities they were doing all sorts of unethical immoral activities while alive causing havoc on this earth causing trouble for people around them they are also worried about death because they now realize oops i'll be caught i'll be exposed i will be accountable i may end up in hell oh my god what am i going to do now they're terrified of death fifth category of people my brothers and sisters are those people who are uncertain about heaven they have been very good all their life they've been good to god they've been good to those people around them they have never done anything wrong immoral knowingly my brothers and sisters they're not worried about dying but they're terrified of not going to heaven what if they get stuck what if what they've done on this earth their good work was not good enough what if they have not done enough to be successful in the hereafter what terrifies them is what if what if terrifies the life out of these people my brothers and sisters this uncertainty about going to heaven or attaining heaven eventually terrifies people from dying six number six in the category they're worried about what might happen to their families when they're dead they worry if they die their families will be left vulnerable exposed penniless perhaps poor they will be unprotected there will be nobody around them to look after them. They worry about their family. This is coming from a good place. Genuine love for their family. They're worried about dying and leaving their family. What will their families do if they die? So therefore they're terrified of dying and leaving their families by themselves. Number seven, there is a group of people who just love this world too much. There are those who think life on this earth is the only thing they have going. So they'll go, they have to make the best of it. They have to make the best house, they have to make the best car, they have to buy the best holiday, best clothes. They have to have everything best of this earth at the expense of the hereafter because they believe this world is the only world that they have in front of them. Nothing else is available. This is the only world that has anything for them going and therefore they are terrified of dying. My question is, which one of these categories describes you which one of these best describe you my brothers and sisters and if it doesn't what is your fear why are you afraid of death are you afraid of meeting allah the creator of the universe the master the kind the most merciful the most benevolent the most gracious the most giving the most forgiving are you afraid of meeting your lord the most loving are you afraid of meeting allah on the day of judgment what are you afraid of I just don't understand why people are so terrified of dying. They see so many people dying all around them. They see that is the most natural thing that is happening around them and yet they're terrified of dying. Why are you terrified of dying? Why are you fearful of death? I lost my father three years ago, exactly in January three years ago. On the 4th of January, he died, 2018. May Allah have mercy on his soul. And I remember I saw the last few seconds of his life. When I arrived in his room, he had barely taken the last breath and he stopped breathing. His body was still warm. I still remember when I had to take the very difficult decision, accepting that my father has passed away. I had understanding that it is the end of my father's life. I had to take the practical steps immediately, leaving aside my emotion, stretch him out properly on his bed, straighten his bed, straighten his arms and legs before they become cold and stiff before the lifeless body of his becomes frozen completely still to the earth completely still to everything around my brothers and sisters I had to do that and it was not easy not because I was terrified of dying I was just sad to see my father who was living breathing who a few years ago was talking, laughing, causing all sorts of emotions within us, has passed away. A human being has passed away. Of course it saddens me. My father passing away saddened me greatly and deeply affected me. But that is the reality that every one of us have been born, have, was born to die. We are only on this earth with one 
ultimate destination and that is dying. Why are you then afraid of dying? If I was to say your ultimate destination is to get uh, become a CEO of a company, would you be afraid of becoming a CEO? No. If I said your ultimate destination is to achieve Nobel Prize for a particular expertise that you bring to this world, would you be afraid of receiving Nobel Prize? No. If I was to tell you that your ultimate destination is to become the best footballer, would you be afraid of playing football? No, you won't. If your ultimate destiny is to meet Allah by dying, why are you afraid of dying? It's a question I'm asking you. I've asked myself this question many a times. The answer lies within ourselves, my brothers and sisters. Why are you afraid of dying? What is it that makes you so afraid? The love of this world, like I said. Maybe we love this world too much. Maybe we love our families too much. Maybe we love ourselves too much. We don't want to die. We want to remain forever youthful and young. We want to remain forever on this earth to be able to explore and exploit what the earth offers us. Only if we knew. Only if we knew. This earth is nothing but a temporary space, a station. It's like a train station. You get on a train, you begin at a point, that's your birth. You end at a station called your death. And in passing, you cross through, you pass th through, you go via hundreds of stations in life. None of them are your permanent abode. The house that you have isn't your permanent abode. It's one of those stations that you're passing in life. The wife, the husband that you have, Another station in life, they are not permanent, they will not stay here forever, they will die or you will die. Your children are not your permanent possession, they are not your possession full stop, they will die, you will die one day. They are also part of that one station in life. Job that you have, success that you had, the troubles that you have had, adventures that you have had in your life, laughter, joy, sadness, misery, gain, prosperity. All the amazing experiences that you've had in life, the food that you relish, every single experience, every single moment in life has only been a station in your life's journey. You are on a journey of life. Your beginning was when you were born and your end would be when you die. What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of dying? When I've been asking this question to myself, brothers and sisters, I have thought long and hard as to how I should reconcile my life and death and what should I do? How should I reconcile them? So I say to people, you have to accept some realities with full conviction, with full conviction. There is no denying some of these realities. Brothers and sisters, reality number one is that I will die one day and therefore I should be ready every day. Reality number one, I will die one day, therefore I should be ready every day. Remember this. I will die one day and I should be ready for it every day. Number two, my death is not determined by me or anyone else around so I will not worry about it. I can't determine my death. Nobody in this world can determine my death. Allah is the only one who determines my death. So why worry about it? You will die at the time, at a place, in a way that Allah has assigned for you. Accept it. Accept it fully without ever fearing it. Can you change any of that? No. You cannot delay it. You cannot change the way you die. You cannot change the moment you die. You cannot change where you will die. You cannot change anything about your death. So accept it. Allah will determine when, how, where you die. Accept it fully. Number three, I've not lived only to waste my life chasing material. I haven't chased material in my life. I know I have been dedicated most of my life in pursuing the higher purpose. So why should I be afraid of death? I know my purpose of life is not to chase material. To use material for the success of the hereafter, yes. But I have not chased material. I have aimed for the higher purpose. Why should I be afraid of death? Number uh, five, I will die to enter the next life, which will never end. I will enter next life only through death, and that life will never end. I accept this, my brothers and sisters. Therefore, I don't chase any illusion that this world is permanent or anything in this world is permanent. Everything in this world, everything about this world, everything about my existence is temporary. Nothing but temporary. So I'm not under any illusion that this world is permanent. And I know that I will die to enter a world, a time, a life that will never come to an end. 
Number six, I have to accept that I will be accountable for my life on this earth, that I will do my best and I have done my best to account myself regularly before I am faced with the final accountability. I do my best, I do every day before I go to bed, lie down on my bed and I think about what I've done throughout the day. I ask Allah to forgive me. I ask Allah to forgive those who have wronged me. And I ask Allah to enable those I have wronged to forgive me too. I take that account on a daily basis. I know I'll be accountable in the hereafter. Why am I afraid of accountability in the hereafter if I have taken accountability of myself? Accept it. Accept it that you'll be accountable in the hereafter. And pursue a daily accountable life. Therefore, you don't have to face the ultimate accountability with misery and humiliation. Number seven, I totally believe and submit to the fact that I will face total justice in the hereafter. I will face and everybody will face total justice. There will be no failing on Allah's part to serve and deliver justice for me and for everybody else around my brothers and sisters. Everyone will, inshallah, find justice in the hereafter. From Hitler who killed millions of Jewish people in Europe to um, anyone who has died in any massacre, including the genocides of the past and of the present, the genocide that we have witnessed in Rohingya, every single general, every single person who has perpetrated the murder of innocent people of Rohingya will find ultimate justice on the Day of Judgment in front of God. Every single person who has perpetrated the crimes of killing the people of Syria, including Bashar al-Assad and his and his friends from Russia or Iran or any part of the world, they will find ultimate justice in front of God. I know they will find justice in front of God. I will know God will not let them get away with their murderous crime, their genocidal activities on this earth. I know the Saudi government will face its punishment in front of Allah for the killing of Yemeni people, for killing and causing misery to the people of the whole world and causing havoc to the Muslim world. I know every government in every part of the world that has caused trouble, they will face ultimate justice. I will face ultimate justice if I had done something wrong. So I accept it. I accept it. On this earth, I didn't find justice. I tried. I did everything possible to stand for justice. And I did everything possible for stand for fairness. I did everything possible for struggle to, for the struggle of justice and fairness. I couldn't achieve it. I couldn't gain it. I know the day of judgment, those who perpetrated injustices, those who perpetrated genocide, those who trampled other people, those who oppressed people will find their ultimate justice. Nobody will escape it. Allah says that in the Quran. He says, Every atom weight of good deeds, every atom weight of bad deeds, you shall see it on the Day of Judgment and you'll be accountable for it. I know, I believe in it, and I've accepted it. If I haven't found justice and accountability on this earth, because I've been a victim of many crimes, I know I'll find it on the Day of Judgment. And I know if I've perpetrated injustice on anybody, I shall also be accountable on the Day of Judgment in front of Allah and I'll have to pay. My brothers and sisters, number eight, my destiny in this life will be determined by how good I was on this earth. My destiny in the hereafter, my destiny in the next life will be determined by how good I was on this earth. What did I do with my life, my youth, my wealth, my time, my opportunities, all the amazing things that came in my way, what did I do with them? That's how my hereafter will be determined. If I wasted it, if I spent it playfully, only in front of computer games, only in front of watching television, only in front of amusement and heart's delight with material possession, with buying for one another, buying with one another for more material, more children, more wealth. If all I have done is wasted my time on this earth, that's how my accountability on the Day of Judgment would be on the Day of Judgment, the outcome would be precisely that. So I have accepted that, that my work on this earth would determine my hereafter. If I accept it, why should I be afraid of dying? Number nine, there would be heaven and there would be rewards for me. And there would be hell and there would be rewards for those who have been disloyal to God. So number nine, there will be heaven, and I'll be rewarded for it. For being good on this earth, for
for being good to God and for being good to other people. I'll be rewarded with perpetual joy, never-ending joy, eternal bliss, bliss that I'd never imagined, youthfulness, food and luxury that I like, companions of pleasure that I prefer. All of that I will get in the hereafter. Why do I waste and chase the temporal on this earth? If I, have, if I believe that there is something awaiting for me in the hereafter, I can reconcile my death very easily. And number 10, there will be hell for me and for me to pay the consequences of my evil action and I will be punished according to my deeds on this earth. So there is something called hell and there is something called heaven. When I have reconciled my life like this, my brothers and sisters, and that is I will die and I shall be ready every day, that I will be accountable, uh, my, my death is not, um, uh, is not determined by anybody else except Allah, that I have not lived to waste my life, I know the purpose of my living on this earth, I will die to enter the next life that will never end, I know that I will be accountable in the hereafter, I have total faith in total justice of the hereafter. I know my destiny will be determined by my action on this earth. I know there is heaven and I know there is hell. When I accept it all and I lead a life, I'm okay. I don't have to be afraid of dying. You don't have to be afraid of dying. May Allah give us the strength and the abilities to be able to lead a good life and not be afraid of dying, but be prepared to die. وَأَخْرِدْ دَعْوَانَا And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم My brothers and sisters I have reconciled my life and my death I'm not afraid of dying anymore The reason I'm not afraid of dying anymore is because I know I'm doing my best to be good I'm doing my best to be good to God I'm doing my best to be good to my fellow human beings I'm doing my best to be good to my environment to the animals, the trees, the plants, the planet itself. I'm doing my best to be good to everybody. When I say I'm doing my good best to be good to God, I mean knowingly I don't disobey God. Knowingly I'm not disloyal to God. When I say I'm being good to my fellow human beings, knowingly I don't abuse my fellow human beings. I don't trample over them. I don't perpetrate just injustice or oppression over them. Knowingly I don't do wrong to my fellow human beings. I know I'm doing my best, and that's all I'm expected to do. My brothers and sisters, I know heaven is a desirable place, but it is not my place. It is Allah's place. And Allah will give me if he wants. I'm doing my best. And if Allah wants me to do my best, I rely on Allah's mercy and kindness, his majesty, his generosity, his forgiveness, that he will forgive me. He will enter me into paradise because I've done my best. I've done my best and if I am confident that I've done my best I'm okay I don't have to be worried about death I don't have to be afraid of death all I have to do is my best my brothers and sisters to refrain from doing evil to refrain from indulging in shamelessness I have to do my best to refrain from oppression and injustices I have to refrain from doing things that are harmful for people individually and collectively harmful for myself and society. As long as I've done my best, I'm fine. I have to ensure that I am doing all the good things that I can. Doing more charity, doing more beneficial work for humanity, looking after my body, my mind, my soul, looking after my parents, my neighbors, my children, my wife, my spouse, looking after people around me, looking after the earth by making sure I recycle, I don't waste food, making sure that I am not harming the environment by causing all sorts of environmental pollution and catastrophe. I am okay if I'm not doing any of that and if I am pursuing a good uh, ethical and moral life, I shouldn't worry about my destiny in the hereafter. I believe in God, absolutely. I believe in the power of God, absolutely. I rely on God, absolutely. And I believe it is in his hand to give me paradise if he wants to. It is in his hand if he wants to throw me in the hellfire. It's up to him.
And I say to God, God, it's up to you. You know me as your servant well. If you think I have done my best, grant me paradise. If you think I have not done my best, forgive me. Still grant me paradise. If you think I have not done my best, inspire me to do better. Forgive me for my mistakes and grant me paradise. Brothers and sisters, fear of death can only overwhelm you when you have been reconciled with Allah. Let me make my final point before I finish for today. Fear of death can only overwhelm you when you have not reconciled with Allah. If you deny Allah, you'll be afraid of death. If you deny of the hereafter, you'll be afraid of death. If you deny accountability, you'll be afraid of death. If you deny that there is a life after death, there will be accountability, there is a life in the grave, there is something called hell, there is something called heaven, you will be terrified of dying. If you can reconcile with your Iman, with your faith in Allah and obey His commands, lead a good life, you'll be fine. Let me put a challenge to you. What is it that Allah says that you find difficult in accepting and obeying? What is it that Allah says that is so harmful for you that you think rebellion is the only way? What is it that Allah says to you to do that is so bad for you that you must disobey Allah? What is it? Tell me one thing that Allah says that is bad for you. So if Allah says something that is good for you, if Allah says something that is beneficial for you, if Allah says something that will make you successful in this world and the hereafter, why would you not pursue that path? Why would you run away from it? If you can reconcile your mind and your action in that way, you'll be fine. You don't have to be worried about death. You don't have to be afraid of dying because you're ready every day. Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Akram Rahimin, forgive us, Ya Allah. Forgive us our mistakes, Ya Allah. Forgive us our mistakes, Ya Allah. We ask you to enable us so that we can be ready for dying every day. We ask you to give us the strength of Iman so that we can accept you fully, Ya Rahman Rahim. We ask you, Ya Allah, to give us the strength to be able to do good on this earth. To good, do good to you, Ya Allah, to be loyal to you, to be obedient to your commands, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, give us the strength to be able to remain good and loyal to our fellow humans, Ya Allah. Ya Akramur Akramin, Ya Rahman Rahim, we ask you to forgive us for our mistakes. But if we haven't done enough and you know about it, please inspire us to do better. And if we have done enough, Ya Allah, instill in our hearts contentment and desire to do better and more. And if we haven't done enough, Ya Allah, inspire us to do better and forgive us for our mistakes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, enable humanity to find peace and stability on this earth. Enable humanity to succeed in this world and the hereafter, Ya Allah. Enable humanity to return to you, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim and restore on this earth peace and stability, Ya Allah. Ya Akramur Akramin, Ya Rahman Rahimin, forgive us for our mistakes, Ya Allah. Restore on this earth peace and stability, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, free Al Aqsa from occupation, Ya Allah. Ya Akramur Akramin, free our brothers and sisters in Palestine from all sorts of occupation and troubles that they face on a daily basis, Ya Allah. On a daily basis, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimin, free Yemen from the constant bombardment by the Saudi and the allied regimes who are also illegitimate. Ya Rahman Rahimin, Remove all the illegitimate regimes from this earth and restore on this earth legitimate rulers who can rule by the mandate of people, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Akram Rahimin, free Kashmir from occupation, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Akram Rahimin, free our brothers and sisters in Syria who have suffered at the hands of a tyrant for almost 10 years. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimin, remove the tyrant, Ya Allah. Remove the tyrants from every part of the world, Ya Allah. Remove all tyrants from every part of the world, Ya Allah. Remove every despot from every part of the world, Ya Allah. Restore on this earth freedom, peace and stability for all people in every part of the world, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimin, free us from this pandemic, Ya Allah. Free us from this illness, Ya Allah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judham wa min sayil asqam. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judham wa min sayil asqam. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سيل الأسقام اللهم رب الناس إذا بالبأس واشف أنت الشافي لا شفاني لا شفاك شفاء لا يقدر سقمة اللهم رب الناس إذا بالبأس واشف أنت الشافي لا شفاني لا شفاك شفاء لا يقدر سقمة يا رحم الرحمين يا كرم الرحمين we ask you to protect our families يا الله يا رحم الرحمين return our children to your deen يا الله keep them to your deen يا الله guide them to your deen يا الله guide the people of our neighborhood our society our country our world to you, Ya Rahman Rahim, to your deen, Ya Allah. Rabbana, taqabbal minna inna kanta samil alim, wa tub alayna, ya maulana inna kanta tawabu rahim. My brothers and sisters, before I finish, I've got a couple of announcements to make. The most important announcement of all announcements, brothers and sisters, is we need your help and support. 
This masjid is closed, has been closed for, throughout the first lockdown and again this time. Do you know why we're closed? Because we want to protect your life and we want to protect the lives of other people. We don't want our NHS to be overwhelmed. We don't want more trouble for ourselves. We want to protect everybody. And in Islam, and in Islam, protecting life is more important than keeping our masjids open. Believe, believe me. Protecting life is more important than keeping our masjids open. So please, brothers and sisters, help this mosque by donating generously. Go to our masjid's website, LICS, and donate generously. You can donate any amount you like. Five pounds a week, every Jum'ah that you're missing, pay five pounds every week, inshallah. Pay more if you can. Set up a standing order. Donate generously online. For this masjid, though it's closed, it is still paying all the bills. Heating bill, electricity bill, all the bills that are coming with this masjid doesn't stop. There are staff, caretakers who need to be paid. Lots of activities that mosque wants to do, they can't do because of resource constraints. So may I please request my brothers and sisters to donate generously for this masjid. Secondly, this masjid, inshallah, will be holding an online Zoom meeting on the 15th of January, which I think is today. 15th of January is today, yes. As far as I'm concerned, if I remember correctly, Friday today. At 6.30 p.m., that is, there is a Zoom meeting, and you find more information on lics.info, the website itself. You can take the login details, login, in which anything to do with COVID and vaccine will be updated. Imam Ishaq and Imam Qadir, Dr. Faroz, Dr. Muhammad Akunji, Catherine West, MP, Dr. Uh, Councillor Adam Jogi, Mayor of Harangay, um, will all be there to answer your question. My brothers and sisters, don't forget we have a family study circle every Sunday that takes place at 6 o'clock on my Facebook page and on my YouTube page and also broadcast from the mosque's website. So please do find more details and jo join with your families and your friends. And finally, brothers and sisters, I'd like you all, I'd like you all to remember this is a very difficult time. A difficult time when we need support and help from everybody. We need unity and we don't need disunity. My brothers and sisters, we want you all to come together and support our masjid. Support this masjid because this masjid has been serving us so well. May Allah bless them. May Allah bless those who have run this masjid so well. And management, the leaders, or leader of our masjid, Sister Rabi and our family. And we make dua for those who have passed away from our congregation. May Allah have mercy on their soul. And we also make dua for all those who are not well. May Allah give them shifa. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.